mm. in your grandmother's strawberry sauce. Mmm, yum. In 1849, Henry David Thoreau set out to hike the outer edge of Cape Cod on a journey of self-discovery. He took extremely detailed notes of everything he saw and stayed with all sorts of local characters he met along the way. His writings have gone on to be one of the best environmental records of the time. 170 years later, my plan is to retrace his 30-mile journey from Nauset to Provincetown to see how much the Cape has changed. My name is Meg Hewitt-Sullivan. I'm an environmentalist and photographer. With just my backpack, my camera equipment, and my filmmaker friend, Nicole, this is where Thoreau started his hike. Each is <laughs> I returned home to follow in the footsteps of Thoreau. This sandbank, the backbone of the Cape, rose directly from the beach to a height of 100 feet or more above the ocean. It was with singular emotions that we first stood upon it and discovered what a place we had chosen to walk on. Thoreau stood right around here and looked out at this beautiful view we have below us. In many ways, the Cape is very much unchanged from what it was like when he was here. In many ways, it has changed as well, but it's this interesting paradox of beyond the same and then beyond different. Thoreau was one of the most influential environmentalists of his time. A firm believer in the importance of nature, his words resonated with politicians and the public alike, laying down the foundation for conservation policy in America. Growing up in Massachusetts, Thoreau is a household name. But it wasn't until I stumbled upon his lesser known book, Cape Cod, that I realized I wanted to recreate his journey and rediscover the wildness of the place that raised me. It's been something that I've just dreamed about. Like Thoreau, I've been taking time to get to know some of the local characters I've met along the way. Like Luke Simpson, environmental science teacher, surf photographer, bartender, who's been living here his whole life. You definitely have a feeling that the land is temporary. On the other hand, there's a lot of things that are gonna allow us to adapt to a different climate. You know, this is probably the coolest place we can be in the country right now. And after walking 10 miles the first day, he was kind enough to let us stay in a tent in his front yard. While passing through Wellfleet, I also met with Gordon Peabody. He runs an environmental agency that focuses on protecting the Cape. We work at the edge of the earth and in God's country. Put your ego in your back pocket. Look at what's going on right in front of you, because that can teach you what you need to know. Being an environmentalist, Gordon knows the Cape like the back of his hand. So many of the things that he was in love with uh, are in place here. The power between the sea and the land uh, is still totally in play and still gives us pause to think, to contemplate what's going on. Basically, we're 40 miles out to sea. No one was ever meant to be here. And Perot was intrigued by that, I was intrigued by that. He was one of the first brave people that went perambulating through undocumented countryside right in our own backyard. Take the first step in the journey that where you're going will be determined. Like you folks, when you're traveling the Cape, you may have a good day, you may have a bad day, you'll find where you're welcome. I think that's something that epitomizes uh, some of his journey. Originally, I started this journey as a way to visualize environmental change on the Cape. But after meeting people like Gordon, I'm realizing this is a story about the resiliency and adaptability of the people that call Cape Cod home. We turned our weather-beaten faces towards Provincetown and the bay again, having now more than doubled the Cape. Since Thoreau's time, seafood and the ocean have been the life force of the Outer Cape. 
Thoreau's observations of limitless cod fishing have been replaced by a new vision of sustainable sea farming. Oysters, shellfish, and even seaweed. Tired, sunburnt, but um, overall morale is at an all-time high. As I finish this journey, I realize the love people have for Cape Cod and the natural wonders around them. It's this shared love of nature that brings us together and connects us all. I'm approaching race point right now, and this is the end. So excited. Doing this trip, I rediscovered the true magic of my own backyard. And like Thoreau, I'm inspired by the wilderness to protect it.